So let's move on. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's know that. Let's just get back to boring stuff that's going to be on the test. <laughs> so let's talk about classifying products. Uh, why would you want to classify them? And then we'll talk about some of the different classifications. Um, a classification system, is, uh, the fancy word for that is a taxonomy. Um, and it's just a sim systematic way of looking at something. And the value of a systematic way of looking at something is we talked before about making decisions and there's defensible decisions. When you have a systematic way of looking at something, it's easier to make defensible decisions because you're considering more than just what's right in front of you. Um, so they can be very helpful in, in, all kinds of, um, in all kinds of ways. For product classifications, um, there's different classification system. Each one has different uses. Um, and all of these can be used as segmentation variables. So business goods, we talked about that. These are products that people do not purchase for personal enjoyment, but purchase as a means to an end. They could be goods for resale, uh, goods for other product, or goods used to support the organization. That one's pretty good. Um, Another way of classifying products is consumer goods that are used in its current form. Um, one kind of consumer good is a convenience product. This is something that's purchased frequently, usually relatively inexpensive. Um, I have a colleague who came up with, I felt was the best definition of a convenience product, something that you might find at a 7-Eleven. <laughs> Um, a shopping product is a product that you will probably expend some resources in, in making that decision. Um, there's probably a little bit of risk, financial risk or social risk associated with that, and you're probably going to consider more than one alternative when you're making your purchase. Um, so clothing, appliances, cars, those would be shopping goods. Um, specialty products, these are products that in the eyes of the beholder are indispensable, um, sometimes called niche products. Um, so it depends. Uh, for example, many times if you are in a country other than the one that you grew up in, sometimes you get a craving for the foods that you had back home. And you will not accept any substitute. And I'll drive 50 miles to get um, well, to get really good pickled herring. Because <laughs> the lefse that you get out here, th those are Scandinavian foods that, from my Minnesota heritage, are. You just can't find good pickled herring out here. Um, but for the individual, there's no substitute. So if I can't get what I want, I won't. And each person is. I have here an example retro candy. Bonamo's Turkish taffy. The last kind of consumer good that's used in its present form is unsought products. And this is kind of interesting because there's two kinds of unsought products, and they're polar opposites. One kind of unsought product is a product that I know about and I don't want. Okay? The other kind of unsought product is a new product that I might want, but I've never heard of. Because if you think about it, if it's a new product, you can't be looking for it because you don't know that it exists. Um, so what happens is for unsought products that people are avoiding them. Um, for example, I have here uh, burial insurance who here has made their arrangements for their final disposition of their remains. Why not? You know, it's only a few dollars a day if you start now. <laughs> I've got a lifetime guarantee. Uh, because we don't want to think about death, right? Um, same thing with insurance. We don't want to think about death. We just So we avoid those products. Um, for those, you, you need to have um, intrusive selling. You, you need to encourage people to make the buy. And then for products that you didn't know exist, again, you just need to have intrusive advertising. You need to somehow get into their space so that they can be aware of your product to get it into the buying process, get it into the awareness set. Another way of classifying products is durable versus non-durable. Um, durable goods are things that last a long time. The definition can be somewhat arbitrary. 
Um, ballpark is something that is expected to last three or more years is considered a durable good. Something that is expected to last in three years is a non-durable good. Uh, some things fall in the cracks. For example, fashion is considered a non-durable good, but many people wear clothes for more than three years. <laughs> the suit is older than most of you. <laughs> Um, so, again, you could see where I would sell a product that people are going to have for a long time differently than a product that people are going to repeatedly purchase. Um, different strategies for those. Uh, 